in Christ, we are citizens of heaven already. And we are in exile now. And taking that analogy about the east, east of the temple was where? The Mount of Olives. And also just east of the temple was where? Golgotha, Calvary. Death and life and new life new life through death from the east not only is there death but there is rebirth there is resurrection there is eternal life and this my brothers and sisters is why we turn to the lord and we turn to the east this is why because we look yes we look forward to the coming of the Messiah who will come from the East who has enabled already from the East the prospect of new life for us for though he went from the Mount of Olives to Calvary and died yet he rose again and particularly my brothers and sisters this is important for us in this time of persecution for the church. We are of course all terribly upset about the news from Sri Lanka. And as I've said in my homilies the last couple of days, we should not forget neither this tragedy nor any of the other martyrdoms so far encountered this century. We should learn and know the details. Now I admit, for some of us it's going to be difficult to remember their names, because of course their names are foreign and not, you know, we're not used to them. But still, we can have them on prayer cards, we can still uh, have them, uh, we can still write them down, in our prayer books because we should begin now to honour and to venerate these 21st century Christian martyrs just as we still honour and venerate the memory, the testimony, the legends, the vita, the actor of the previous generations of martyrs going all the way back to the early church. particularly moving I thought was one of the photographs uh, from St Sebastian with a statue of the risen Christ next to the paschal candle splattered with the blood of the martyrs from the bomb blast what perhaps people may not have picked up from the news was that there were a host of children who were due to make their first Holy Communion on that Easter Sunday. Now some of us may be familiar of course with some of the tradition that goes around First Holy Communion in the West. It's become a little bit of a uh, show uh, in the way that uh, now every secondary school has to have a, a prom uh, just because they've seen it on the telly uh, from, I don't know, um, uh, Beverly Hills 90210, whatever it is, and all those sorts of high school dramas. Um, but the traditions of First Holy Communion, which only really go back, uh, say, 150 years in the West, but of course, the children, the boys, dress smartly. Uh, if they belong to a uniform organisation, they perhaps will wear their uniform. But otherwise, they will wear a shirt and tie, uh, a nice waistcoat, or even a suit. And the girls, the girls of course, will dress themselves 
in little bride-like outfits, little bridal-type outfits. And of course, these children, being generally only five to eight years old, which is the average ages for making their first communion, are innocent. They are like those virgins that we read of in scripture, both those prudent and the foolish virgins, but also those spoken of in the Revelation who accompany the Lamb of God. Judging from the video footage that is now available on the internet, I'm guessing that they had not yet made their first Holy Communion. It looks like the Liturgy of the Word is still going on when the bomber walks in with his backpack up almost to the pulpit. You can see the children in their first Holy Communion uniforms and bridal dresses. They're near the front. It's their blood on the statue of the risen Jesus. It's their blood on the Paschal candle representing the light of the world. however saddening the thought is that they did not receive the Holy Eucharist. On the other hand, they received perhaps something more precious. They received Jesus. Maybe not in the form of the bread of angels, but he would have been first to greet them and welcome them home, having passed through death, having sojourned in exile since their baptisms. Now he was welcoming them home. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what resurrection means for us as Christians. that death is simply the means by which we gain entry into paradise, into the promised land. Come All Saints Day this year, the remembrance of these children will stay with me when we read from the revelation about the innocence that everywhere accompany the Lamb of God singing a new song. We should not, my brothers and sisters, be too sad in many ways, the, world, the way the world, our world is going at the moment, they are in many ways better off, perhaps, with Jesus. Better off, perhaps, not having endured the loss of innocence that so many of us grieve and spend most of our adult lives regretting. And we might take some consolation with the fact that likely their end was quick. Certainly they would have had no premonition that it was coming, they had no idea that it was coming. And being toward the centre of the blast, it would have been more or less instantaneous. Wonderful perhaps to think that they were sitting at the front, looking at that statue of the risen Jesus, and seeing his light, his resurrection light, in the Paschal Candle, one moment, 
and in the next, seeing him for real. And it is that hope and it is that promise of resurrection and eternal life for us that should mean that as Christians we don't become sad and we don't allow sadness to become anger or bitterness. And that our response is only of sacrificial love. And however difficult it is to conceive of the idea of forgiving those who perpetrated this awful tragedy, again we might take some consolation with the fact that we don't have to judge them. Likelihood is we don't have even to forgive them. We will probably never know them. But having that attitude and remembering then not to speak in angry tones but with love might help to prevent further tragedies like this occurring again. Because there is nothing to inspire more evil and more hatred than angry words and words of retribution, of vengeance and of judgment. Revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Let's leave it to God to deal out justice. Let us focus on love. And just as the church, which has grown in love for centuries from the blood of preceding martyrs, so too let us allow their blood to speak to us of love, true and sacrificial love, And allow their martyrdoms, like those of old, to inspire us, to encourage us, to embolden us, and enable us to become living, breathing icons of the resurrection life, of the manifestation of God's love in Christ to our world. In the name of the Father and of the Son. Of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.